Welcome to a brief sample of Introduction to Ireland. I'm Mike Murphy, retired professor of English at UWGB. Cheryl's with me here. She is my wife and she is a retired nurse and also a harpist. With a name like Murphy and a great interest in Irish culture, I was very lucky to marry a harpist because Ireland's national emblem is the harp. The shamrock is the national flower, but it's the harp that is the national emblem. The harp shows up on its coinage, on its beer, on its official flag. It even shows up on the most recent bridge that Ireland built uh, over the Liffey River in Dublin. The harp became Ireland's national emblem because it is the key feature in many ancient Irish legends. And if you've ever wondered why mermaids so frequently are pictured with harps, it's because of an ancient Irish legend. That legend is called the origin of the harp, and it goes back at least a thousand years, and it was put to music by Thomas More's Ireland's national poet back around 1800 or so. Here's Cheryl Plain, the origin of the harp, which traces the origin of the harp to the transformation of a mermaid, a siren of the sea, into the world's first harp. It is believed that this harp, which I wake now for thee, was a siren of old who sang under the sea, and who often at eve through the bright waters roved to meet on the green shore a youth whom she loved. But she loved him in vain, for he left her to weep, and in tears all the night tresses to steep, till heaven looked with pity on true love so warm, and changed to this soft harp the sea maiden's form. Still her bosom rose fair, still her cheeks smiled the same, while her sea beauties gracefully formed the light frame, and her hair is let loose or her white arm it fell, was changed to bright chords, uttering melodies spell. Hence it came that this soft harp so long hath been known to mingle love's language with sorrow's sad tone. And in the 5th century, when St. Patrick brings Christianity to Ireland, all those mermaids miraculously morph into angels with wings. And just a quick reminder that St. Patrick was an immigrant, not a native Irishman. He was not Irish. He was brought to Ireland from Britain as a slave. What we know for certain about St. Patrick is that he was a Roman Briton coming from the area that is now Wales or perhaps Scotland. We know his name was not Patrick, it might have been Maywin Suckett. We could be celebrating St. Suckett's Day instead of St. Patrick's Day these days. We know he was kidnapped around the age of 16 and brought back to Ireland by those Irish raiders. We know he herded sheep up in Northern Ireland as a slave for six years and then had a truly miraculous escape from Ireland and fled to Europe and became a priest and then a bishop. He returned to Ireland as a missionary with a new name, Patricius, now Patrick. St. Patrick with his fellow monks was immensely successful in converting pagan Ireland completely to Christianity. And then he died, perhaps on March 17th, perhaps around the year 460, and perhaps was buried in Northern Ireland 
in the town of Downpatrick. And he left behind a number of very, very famous legends. The first famous legend is that St. Patrick used a three-leaf clover, which the Irish call a shamrock, to illustrate the Trinity, the three-person-in-one-God doctrine. Uh, that makes sense, so it is perhaps true. The second famous legend is that St. Patrick drove all the snakes out of Ireland. That legend is false. It is true that there are no snakes in Ireland today, but there were no snakes in Ireland when St. Patrick was there, too. All of the snakes disappeared long, long, long ago. The Great Ice Age buried Ireland, and it was cut off from land when all of that ice melted. There have been no snakes in Ireland for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. I'd like to finish up this sample of our course with a reminder of Ireland's small, isolated size, but incredibly unique fame. There is no other country, no other ethnic group in the world that has the same kind of fame, the same amount of fame as Ireland. It is the same size as West Virginia. It is about half the size of Wisconsin. But despite this small size, it has worldwide fame, worldwide celebrations. Amazing. St. Patrick's Day is celebrated not only in America, but in England, in Russia, in China, Japan, Africa, and dozens of other countries all around the world. Those celebrations involve people of all ages dressing up in wonderfully colorful costumes, always featuring the color green. To celebrate a saint who died 1,500 years ago on a small island, people today even dress up their kids, their dogs, their cats, even their horses dyed green. And they dye the rivers green too in dozens of cities across the country. And the food gets dyed green too and gets shamrocks added to it. In the weeks before St. Patrick's Day, you can find the most incredible variety of kitschy Irish items showing up for sale in a variety of stores, including items like these. The small, isolated island of Ireland is famous even for its music. Almost everyone these days is familiar with the tune of Danny Boy. It's an ancient Irish tune that goes back 200, perhaps 300 years ago. And the lyrics reflect on the great themes of Irish harp music and Ireland's long, sad history, the theme of love and sorrow. The lyrics describe how a son gets called to go off to war and leaves behind his loving and seriously grieving father who looks forward to his return even after perhaps the father has died. Here's Cheryl, plain Danny Boy. Oh, Danny Boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. The summer's gone, and all the flowers are dying. Tis you, tis you must go, and I must bide. But come ye back when summer's in the meadow, or when the valley's hushed and white with snow. Tis I'll be here, in sunshine or in shadow. Oh, Danny boy, Oh, Danny boy, I love you so. And if you come and all the flowers are dying and I am dead, as dead I well may be, I pray you'll find the place where I am lying and kneel and say an ave there for me. And I shall hear how soft you tread above me, and all my grave will warmer, sweeter be. For you will bend and tell me 
that you love me, and I shall sleep in peace until you come to me. That concludes this brief sample in our regular course. We cover Ireland's geography and landscapes, some key aspects of traditional Irish culture, some major turning points in Irish history, all accompanied with some traditional Irish harp music by Cheryl. Thanks for listening to this today. Hope to see you in our class in the future. Bye for now. <laughs>